Hello Hustle fam, I hope you all doing great. If today is your first time coming across this channel, then welcome. And welcome to all my returning subscribers guys, thanks for the love. Today I have for you the face behind the hustle. And I'm excited to put the spotlight on one of Ghana's dynamic baden entrepreneurs. I actually got to know her through her sister who has a channel on YouTube. Do check her out. She is Basilea Foods. Without wasting much time, I'd like a guest to introduce herself to us. Hello, my name is Adjua Kensama Okomye TV. I'm 36 years old, married, but without kids at the moment. I had my basic education at Association International School, and then I went on to a Brigio Senior High School. And then I did my first degree in economics at Kwame Nkrumah University of Science and Technology in Kumasi. After that, I chartered in financial economics, after which I did my postgraduate in human resource management at Central University. So now I can say currently, human resource management is what I'm using in my mainstream job as a general manager in a construction firm. Now for my side hustles, I have three main side hustles. The first one is fabric retailing, whereby I buy fabrics in bulk and then I resell them to my clients in smaller yardages. So the main idea is that an individual in an everyday life will not want to purchase fabrics from wholesalers at let's say 15 yards, 20 yards. They cannot do that. So I do that. I purchase in such bulk quantities. And then such individuals who would want like two, three, four, maximum of six years at a time will purchase from me. So that's what I do in my main side hustle. And the second one is hair growth and strengthening treatment kits. In this one, I make a composition with natural herbs for hair growth and then natural oils also for hair growth and hair strengthening. And then the third business is fashion designing but that one i'm still in the fashion designing school so i've not ruled it out yet but then my family and friends give me small gigs once in a while where i make very small things like skates dresses and then aprons once in a while for my family and my friends I would say every individual has entrepreneurship inbuilt in them. Once you can communicate with other people, then it means you can sell something to such people in exchange for money. So everyone has entrepreneurship within them already. My mind was harnessed, or I will say an earth, during my MBA, where I had a course in entrepreneurship. So all the ideas and suggestions that came up in those classes kind of an earth entrepreneurship within me. And then when I moved to my fashion retailing business, my sister actually introduced it to me. And then when I started rolling it out, I had this lady who previously I used to purchase fabrics from. She saw it and then she reached out to me and she offered to introduce me to her suppliers, both locally and internationally. And then she started coaching me on the do's and don'ts in the business. She's currently my, she's still my coach. She still helps me out a lot, thanks to her. When I come to my hair growth and strengthening treatment kits too, once again, at a stage in my life, I realized through a lot of braiding and all, my hairline was receding. So again, I reached out to my big sister and she introduced me to natural herbs that can grow my hair. So I went further and I researched on it. I went on Google, I researched on herbs for hair growth, and I went further to oils for hair growth. I started reading on all of them, and then I settled on a few. And then I did a composition and started trying them out on my hair, and I started seeing the progress. So once it started progressing, family and friends once again came in, and then they started to pitch it. So like I mixed for them, and then the use. But then I've not rolled it out yet because I want to still monitor and see progress. And then also monitor the various hair types. And then with time, I can be sure of my compositions 
for all hair types and then i can roll it out into the public now when it comes to my fashion designing i like to dress up and i like sewing a lot but then i started having issues with my designers i mean i go to the extent of drawing out my designs illustrating them on paper for them to produce for me but they still come and i see mistakes like it's not as i wanted it it's not as i described them to you so i decided to just try them out for myself like make my own clothes so initially i went on youtube i took a collection of videos started trying them out but i didn't have this professional finishing touch so i enrolled in a fashion designing school because of my main job my eight to five job i enrolled for the evening sessions so after i wake then i go to school very soon i'll graduate and then i can be a, a full-time fashion designer but it will still be my side as well. about marketing my businesses i'll say the main means is through my own self i am my own brand ambassador i mean my fabrics i use my fabrics i sew my fabrics i wear my fabrics so you see my fabrics on me so most of the time when i am in an outfit someone will ask where did you get the fabric from i said oh i sell it so oh, i want some can i get two years can i get three years then i sell it out there with the hair growth and treatment kits too among, among my circle i market it also on myself because when you see my hair you would want to have one all ladies want good hair long and strong hair so when you see it on me and you oh how do you keep your hair i said oh i compose my own treatment kits so oh, i want some can you get me some and it's running that way for me with my fashion designings too through my school the assignments given and all like you sew for yourself in the school you use your own self as your own model so when i make my outfits and i wear them they see they are like wow it's nice and so i made it myself oh can you get me one an example is in my office currently i made a skirt and i had four others out of the skirt one lady made three of the same skirt style actually in different colors so i'll say i'm my own brand ambassador i market my products myself but then i also use social media instagram and facebook to market my fabric retailing business. So that's how I market my product. With the issue of online clients trusting me, my main means of my online marketing is payment on delivery. That's how I market my goods. You pay once you receive the product. So when you receive it, you check it and it's up to your standards, then you pay for it. And so most of the time, the delivery guys I use are people I know already. So when I'm sending you out there, I give you the simple instruction that when you get there, wait for me to confirm receipts of the payment before you leave the product and come. So you get there, the client checks, the client is comfortable with it, accepts the product, the client pays, I confirm payment to both parties and then I close the deal there. So that's how I get online customers to trust me. You pay on delivery. You don't pay before I deliver it to you. So once you get that message, you already have trust built at that stage. Why I'm having side businesses, even though I have a mainstream job, is because I'm following the adage that says, don't put all your eggs into one basket. Going from that, I'm not putting all my sources of income in one basket. From pers a personal experience, a few years back, I was in a different company. And then out of the blue, it, it, it was part of a group of companies and one had an issue and it kind of affected all the other companies in the group. So the company I was working with was also affected and we had to go home. The, my company had to fold up, so we had to come home. So in a window of like five months, I was without a job. If I had side businesses then, I wouldn't, it wouldn't have been much of a problem because I had other sources of income. But because all my sources of income was 
channel through that one i was kind of in a tight corner then so it's advisable that you have other sources of income to kind of support you as you go on main challenges in these hassles that is the fabric retailing business most of the time you have an order and they want it delivered immediately but because my shop is at home i can't deliver it same day because i may be in the office when you request for the fabric so it's usually next day deliveries but i have some clients who don't want that so when you have a client who wants it immediately and you, because you cannot deliver immediately, you will lose such a client. That is my main challenge. The second challenge is some clients are working clients. They want to walk into a shop. They want to see fabrics displayed and then they choose from it. Such clients are not used to the online one where they have to scroll through fabrics. And some also don't trust that what they are seeing on the internet is the same thing they will receive. So I have that challenge too, where I don't have a physical shop for the clients to walk in and then choose from a lineup of fabrics. Yes, in the near future, I plan on stopping the mainstream job and concentrating on my side hustles. It's all through process. A process of hard work so as i'm building the businesses i am hopeful and i'm praying that they will grow they will become large once i attain that height definitely i won't have time for the other mainstream job i'll have to concentrate on my businesses so i have that as my plan that i will grow my side businesses and once they are like grown to a level that i can stop the job and then concentrate on those things. That is what I wish to do. Five lessons I've learned out of these side hustles that I wish to relay out there for anyone who also wants to enter into businesses. The first one is to believe in your product. Believe in what you are selling. I believe in my fabrics. I choose the fabrics myself. They are beautiful. I like them. So I will, I will want to have them on me. So I purchase those ones and I believe they are beautiful. So when I'm selling it to other people, I know they are good. I know they are beautiful. So when selling it, it can go fast. My hair growth treatment kits, I believe in them. I believe they are helping my hair. As you can see, they are helping my hair. So when I'm selling it out there, because I believe in the product, I'm able to sell it with ease. The second thing is you have to be honest. In selling, now my main businesses are online. I have to be honest. If I'm selling a blue fabric, I don't advertise it as a purple fabric. When the client receives it, thinking she's receiving a blue one and it comes out purple, you've broken the trust there. Online customers are usually people you have never met. So you need to build some trust in them so that they can come back and purchase from you. So if you break that trust from the onset, you don't know who the people relate with. So you may, through that person, you may have gotten like a hundred more clients. But when you break, you, are, you start off being dishonest with the first person, you lose the other clients that could have come to you through that person. The third lesson I've learned from this is you have to be friendly. You don't know the emotional setup of the person coming to you. So you can't meet the person with your own emotional state. You have to by default be friendly to your clients. Meet people with friendliness. And then some people may, you never know, some people may even buy from you just because of how you communicate with the people. So you have to be friendly in business. The fourth one is do not be discouraged in like your business can't be the first thing 
we can be the only one happening in the world at the moment in my fabric retailing business for instance when you go online when you go onto instagram there are a lot of fashion retailing businesses a lot so many with a lot of following you can't be discouraged by just looking at those things but then you have to occasionally all always encourage yourself always remind yourself that it is a very big world my clients may not be the clients of the other person even though i have a very small following now i can say i'm still selling products so do not be discouraged by competition by people out there doing the same thing as you always encourage yourself that it's a big world once you believe in your product once you believe in your god once you pray about your business know that your business will grow people will buy from you you will get your own clientele base so believe in that for yourself and it will work out for you the fifth one i will say is that surround yourself with a very good support base surround yourself with people who will encourage you who will push you on not people who will undermine you people who will discourage you people who will just bring out the negativities in your business to you no surround yourself with people who speak positive things into you and help your business grow these are the five lessons I'll say I have learned in my businesses and things that I want to suggest to other people who are already in business or who want to enter into businesses. So much. Thank you so much, Adjoa Ochre. Um, I really do appreciate your time with us and you've learned so many things from you today. I mean, a woman, a married woman, well, I know you don't have kids, but just having another human being to take care of is a lot of work. And then you developing two side hassles and running one and also having a full-time job. That is a lot of ration to say that you can't, we can do anything if we put our minds to it. You've got your degree, you've got your postgraduate, and you learning um, um, from a design school. That 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 is a lot of of commitment. And I do appreciate the time that you have given us to um, so even tell us more about yourself and your business. And we pray that this doesn't end here. It's going to go bigger. And then you must remember the side hustle, exquisite side hustle. Interviewed you first, eh? You must not forget yes. that. <laughs> so thank you so much for your time. Yes, and bye.